Hi everyone, it's Eunice again here. Um, I got a lot of requests to do a uh, tutorial on how I decorated my envelope flip book here. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you guys how to decorate the flip books that I showed you how to make in my last video. I also uh, did get a couple of things to finish this specific one off. I went and bought new paper because I didn't want to make um, a flip book that looked pretty much identical to the original one I did. I wanted to make something that was new for you guys. So I went and bought this. This is the DCWV Lively Geos. Uh, there are 36 sheets. It is 12 by 12 inches. It's double sided cardstock this time. Um, and it also has some rose gold foiling on some of the designs. When I was at the shops, I um, was thinking about um, the original flip book I did. And I really like the idea of something hanging on the front here of the um, closing tab. I didn't want to use the little journals for these designs. So I actually went and got this which I thought would work really well I really love um, gemstones and um, crystals and the um, what are they called geodes um, all those kinds of things so I thought this would go perfectly with the ge geometric designs I do see that the actual hardware on this pendant is silver um, and all of this is of course rose gold as I said before, but we can make it work. Now as I've already made the envelope flip book I'm just going to use one of the ones I created in my last video I'm using the one with the tab closure. So first thing is first I'm pulling out my papers um, and I'm just gonna open it up and go through um, And see the designs that I want. I don't know if you can see but I definitely want to use this Art Deco honeycomb design here. So let's have a flip through. I am liking this honeycomb design on the back here. I'm actually thinking maybe that would be good for the front. I quite like that look actually. And you know what? This actually goes really well because the hardware around this crystal is also a honeycomb shape. So that goes really well with the honeycomb shape of this design. Just thinking, you know, the thread, I'm probably going to have to close it the same way because I don't have any magnets or anything to close the tab on this one. The only thread I have, this is actually cooking twine. <laughs> you know, you wrap up your roast in it. Um, but I thought it, you know, it was three or four dollars or something for this entire roll. It looks a bit messy at the moment because <laughs> my cat got to it and kind of use it as a toy for a little bit but I'm not really feeling this color against this green and with this crystal I do have leftover black and white thread there is that one instead of this yes I actually really like that I there are some black and white designs in this paper stack so this will be a good little um you know, like foreshadowing as to what you can expect within the flip book. <laughs> so yeah, I think I will use this black and white string. Aha, here we go. Black and white to go with the thread. I think that would work very well. I kind of like it, um, but again, we'll see what else there is. This would also be really good, except um, the cactus is going the wrong way and I'm pretty sure that hole in the center there won't be low enough and this cactus at the bottom of the page is a bit too big I think unless I cut it but then we have a cactus growing up like that so we could have the cactus there and then the black and white on this page and then on the back of that we've got another black and white pattern I do like that black and white pattern Ah, this is the pattern that I really like, the rose gold pattern. It's honeycomb um, and then these lines through each little honeycomb. Um, it's just very art deco to me. I don't know, that's just what it reminds me of. On top of that, how does that look? 
because then if we've got this flip down and this green is revealed that goes really nicely with the cacti got another rose gold pattern here I think this is our last design on the back the green zigzag I think that goes a little bit better than that Art Nouveau style one yeah I think I'll do that one instead we definitely want this one if she wants to come out thank you so no more green because I'll already have this the cacti and the back of that rose gold pattern so no more green so to pull that rose gold in a little bit more we could use maybe this design here if I can find that what do you think is that too much white it is a quite a white design though so maybe we go for this lighter one it might go a little bit better yeah I think we'll go for that here are our pages I quite like that so I have one two three four five pieces of card from that stack so the next step is to take a, one of your pieces of card and decide if you haven't already where you're going to place this within your flip book so I've already decided that it's going to go on my first page what I like to do is actually have this design going from right from this edge and going all the way through into this tuck spot as far back into this envelope as I can that way you know if I tuck something in there and there's something stuck on that tag it's not going to catch on the paper that ends in the middle of the pocket um, it'll just be smooth and easy to pull in and out okay so I need to measure how far it is from this edge to the edge of this envelope so I've got that piece cut out now now there is the hole in this but uh, because it's being tucked in here um, and it's so far back I'm actually not worried about that hole being there so next we want to measure a piece for this part here you can cover these tab areas if you like and just measure this distance and this distance and mark where that is and roll it up and cut it out that way and that way you're not left with this little tab there and at the top it doesn't really bug me that they're there um, so I'm just gonna make a rectangular piece so because the design that I want on this area here is on the back of this page I'm actually just going to skip that for a second and measure the distance from this edge here all the way through so that I can cut out my cacti and stripe design that I want for this spot and then whatever scrap I have left over I can use on this page the back side of this on this page so I have all my papers measured in cuts um, I have actually scored one of them um, now I actually don't have a proper scoring um, table and um, what are they called the bone tool um, so I actually just used a butter knife <laughs> um, to score all the folds in my flip book so I have scored one already so that is going to be our flip down so I'll show you where all the pages go this page that tucks through here with this on top um, then we flip the page and we'll have this with the rose gold flip and this tucked in here now I have just realized that I haven't done a piece of paper for this yet out of this rose gold material so bear with me and I will be back so take two this is what the page will look like uh, now that I've added that same design there and I think that looks really nice now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these away I'm gonna leave this one in and this is gonna be the first one I'm going to score now I am gonna do it on my cutting mat 
and I'm just going to take my butter knife and I'm going to line it up on this line here right where the um, envelope tag where I see that fold begins just there and just up here now what I'm going to do is holding that in place I'm going to grab my ruler I'm going to line that up as well so that I have an edge to put my blade against. I'm then going to just firmly press the back side of this knife and drag slowly down. So now I'm just going to take the piece of paper, the actual envelope tag I'm just leaving, and slowly, just so I can check that it is folding on that line, which it is, and I'm just going to slowly press down. And there we go, I have that folded, so that'll fold nicely now. So I'm just going to put that back in place and fold it closed with the envelope. And there it is. Next I'm going to slip this page in. I'm going to adjust it and then again I'm going to score this right in the middle here. I'm now just doing my final scoring piece. So give yourself a high five <laughs> if you got that all done well. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to stick in this piece first. So I'm just going to leave her in there. Um, I'm going to take out this floral design. So what I found the best way to do this was to hold it open put your hand in and puff up this envelope as much as you can and then just squeeze the edges slightly so that you're holding it in place then take your glue and get in there as best you can right maybe a centimeter away from the inner corners and you're going to glue from here across up up and zigzag through you just want to be careful that you're not putting too much glue in there um, because it will misshapen this envelope. Now, if you think you've got too much glue in some areas, like I definitely do, I'm not sure if you can see, but I'm just going to go in with a tiny little spatula and just spread those little clumpy bits out a little bit. So now I'm just going to gently hold this and I'm going to fold it closed and press down. So now that that is nicely in place in there, now we can fold it how we need to and open it how we need to. Now that that is stuck in its place and we know that it lines up, the score lines up with the fold of the envelope. So that's great. So now I'm going to glue this other side now that the inside of this is nicely done. Okay, so just a Fine line as best you can. And then just Yeah, I'm running out of glue. Oh no. So I do again have some clumpy spots, so I'm just going to smush those out as best I can. Now seeing as this is going to um, this piece of paper is going to be visible. I want the glue to be right at the edges as best I can so I'm just going to smooth this as close to the edge as I can get it. A nice thin 
coverage so that it doesn't bubble out too much. Okay, so now we're going to flip this closed and press. And there it is. So I'm just gonna press it real good. That's what I'm talking about with excess glue in the back. <laughs> But um, yeah, that will dry and that will be covered as well. So not to worry. Next, I'm going to do this piece. I'm also going to take this tag off here and smoosh it all down. Just fold it. Beautiful. Okay, so it is uh, the next day. Um, now, I was just recording finishing off this flip book, uh, sticking the papers down, but when I look back at the footage, everything was sideways so I can't use the footage. Rookie mistake, won't let it happen again but um, unfortunately you don't get to see how I did a lot of the stuff that was left in this book. I had to stop yesterday because I ran out of glue but I went to the shop this morning and I got more glue so that's all good. Anyway I will show you what I have done in my previous recording. So this is the inside of our flip book. When I left off, all we had stuck down was this piece of paper and this. So to finish off this page with the flip, all I did was with my um, piece of paper here, this um, I measured out to be a little bit shorter than the width of the envelope as I normally do. Then I measured how high I wanted it to cover the envelope and then added just under a centimeter to allow for the tab that is under here so that it can flip. Now I stuck this piece down first before sticking this design so that we could cover that little tab. I stuck it with a double sided tape because seeing as we're sticking this piece of paper over it, it doesn't really need another line of glue under there. The double sided tape will hold that just fine. I repeated here what I did with this cactus print. Then I stuck this black and white strip down and then everything internally is finished. So what we're up to now is gluing on the covering design. First thing is first, because this has gotten so thick because we've added paper to it, this flap closure won't close now. So what I did on the original one as well is I actually scored a bit of a second fold along this flap to allow this to close over the thickness that over how thick this has become. The way I've done that is I press it down, not too hard, but you know, press it down flat. Then I hold it there as best I can. And then you'll take your scoring bone, mine is just a butter knife, and I just make a little mark down the bottom here of where I want that fold to be. Now, it is important to note that the bottom end of the flip book will be thicker than the top because of that flap that's on the second page. So when you are scoring, just remember not to get too tight up against the top end because then you'll have a wonky fold line. So because my design here has lines through it, I can follow that line for the fold. So. Um, I can see where uh, my score line is going to go. I've done my two lines, so now I'm going to flip it upside down just so it's easier for me. Take my ruler, so there's something to put my blade against. Line it up against the two little score marks on the ends there. And then just firmly press down and score all the way across. So now I'm just going to gently... Just pinch it over gradually and then fold it down properly. 
Now, because there is already that fold line there, the envelope tab will want to fold back on that naturally. So just be really careful when you're folding your new score line so that it doesn't fold on your score line and then all of a sudden it folds from your new score line and then all of a sudden it goes down to this one. So there you can see that we've got a second score line there. And look, now it closes really nicely over that. So like I said, I'm now going to measure up my papers to cover the front cover, the back cover, and this tab here. Now what I like to do is I just keep this really thin line bare. I'm just going to measure up the front, the back, and the tab. The way I'm going to do that is the same way I did in the original flip book. And I'm going to have it so that when you open it up, the pattern continues right the way across. Okay, so I've got all three of my pieces cut out. I'm then going to stick my front and my back cover on first because I do need to taper the edges of this to suit this design, this curved design here. So I have just cut out the edge curved design of my final piece. The way I did that is I placed my uncut piece on it and then took a pencil and just lightly traced where that edge is and then cut it out. Okay, so now I have all three glued down. Let's see how it looks while it's closed. Very nice, I do like that. So now what you wanna do is take any die cuts or stamps or anything that you would like to decorate these with and find where you want to place them. Okay, so I have my bits. <laughs> my I have my die cut bits for um, all through the book. Um, now I did cut out a separate design for a little tuck in here. It's just grey stripes and the same pattern but in rose gold. Um, I just thought it was, um, there needed to be a bit of a, a card for a tuck. Um, but also um, the grey went really well with the grey stripes and the rose gold foiling and I thought it was important to bring some more grey into it. Now I don't want to add anything on this page. I think the cacti is decoration enough for this page. Plus we've got all this rose gold as well. So I've kept it pretty simple. So these are my die cut pieces that I'll be using. Um, now I am aware that two pieces do have yellow gold um, instead of the rose gold, but I think that it's not so obvious, um, so I'm still able to use it. There is a lot going on design-wise on these pages. Um, there are a lot of bold patterns and we do have the foiling and this picture already. So I think the only real pages that we want to decorate would be this and this. I want to keep, I want to leave this plain and let it have its own moment. Um, and I want to keep this plain to have its own moment. Now you can um, have another tuck card in here. I don't have one in there just because I couldn't find the perfect piece for in there. So I am just going to attach everything with double sided tape. Um, the reason is that these aren't very large items that I'll be sticking down. Plus they're not on folds or will, they won't be moving about or anything like that. There won't be any movement on the paper where they'll be stuck. So the double sided tape will hold them well enough. So I'm just going to start with my green leaf that's going to go in this bottom left hand corner here and I just want it on these bottom three, on these bottom three leaves here. So I'm just going to flip her over. If you can see that, that is where the tape is and how close to the edge it is. I've taken off the backing of that and I'm going to just eyeball where I want it first and then press down nice and hard so that's secure. Now I'm just going to test it out. Beautiful. That sits in there nicely and when I flip the page they don't fall out. So next I'm going to attach the little note to self and I'm just going to do it on the top half. I'm just going to try and find the upper middle so it actually works out to be over this 
area here where the flower design joins. Get it as close to being in the middle as it can be. And then press down nice and hard. And to test that, I'm just going to slip this under there. Again, it won't fall out. So that's terrific. So on to the next page. I'm going to stick down this Enjoy Every Day sticker first. And now I'm going to get right over, I'm going to hold this down and get right above my book so that I can see where the center is perfectly. And there we go. So now onto what's behind the flip. I'm going to take my little geode and I'm just going to hold it there just so I can see where it should be stuck. So I am using this to see how far over I need to go so that it does stay hidden behind the flap when that looks good. So I'm just going to hold my Mindful Moments card there and take this away. And then on this left side of the geode is where I'm going to put some double-sided tape. Okay, I've peeled that off. I'm not sure if you can see where that tape is, but I'm make, gonna make sure that that stays on my left side. I'm gonna hold my Mindful Moments in place. Gently put my geode on top. Once I think it's all right, I'm just going to put my finger there and slip out my mindful moments and stick down the geo really well. That way I don't accidentally stick this under it. And there we go. There's the flip. So that is that, the inside decorating done and all the papers done. Now I'm just going to put a hole punch here and attach my thread and my um, quartz crystal gemstone. So in order to be able to do that, you do need a hole punch, as I say, because we're going to punch a hole. <laughs> and we're going to see where our center is. And I think it's actually in the middle of this honeycomb here. But just to be sure, we will use a ruler. So I'm going to go for seven centimeters, which is pretty well center for the flap here. So I'm just going to put my finger where that is and yes I was right it is in the center of that honeycomb there. If you need to remember which honeycomb just put a little circle. Now I am going to stamp this fairly close to the edge here. I'm not going to go further than where the honeycomb pattern ends. Bottom of my um, hole punch is actually right on the edge of the green paper so there we go, there's our hole. Now I'm not gonna be worried about that tearing because I am going to put an eyelet through it. So we're gonna grab the color that we want. I'm going with silver because the hardware on my crystal is silver. Okay, so there is our hole complete with the eyelet on there. So now I'm going to grab my little crystal I have slipped the jump ring from the crystal into the hole with the crystal off so that way I can get it in easier, it's less fiddly and then just slip the crystal on and get my pliers and press it closed. And there we go, there's our little crystal on there. How cute does that look? Oh, I really like that and it flips around well, it's not tight on there or anything like that. So now I'm just going to attach my thread. Now my thread isn't very long, it's definitely not as long as my original flip book, but it's long enough to I think wrap around it at least twice. So I'm just going to fold it over and have one side really short and I'm just going to pinch that close and get it through this eyelet. Then through that hole, I'm going to slip the rest of the, th the cord and then pull it tight gently. Now to close this, I'm going to take the long bit, just drop the short bit down. I'm gonna take the long bit and wrap it around There's once. There's twice, we can do three, three wraps of it. So that's great. So now that it's back here, I'm just gonna move it up above the crystal bit. 
I'm gonna put my finger down tie a little knot there and then do a small bow and there we have it there's our closure there's our wrap all done so there you go now you don't have to have this um, twine wrap with the little um, gemstone what you could do instead is you could definitely decorate this front cover with something and have a magnet closure but there we go there is the finished version of the geometric flip book and here is the original one that I did so two completely different designs but they are definitely sisters. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. I know it was a long one. Let me know what you think of the geometric design. I know it's a little bit different, um, but I still quite like it. So yes, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time. Bye.